Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls doing? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. We're going to be talking about something very important in this video. We're going to be talking about the perspective and the orthographic projections that we can do and the matrices we're going to use to achieve those. Now, in this tutorial, I'm not going to show you the ortho orthographic uh, projection, but basically what that is, the difference is what I'm going to show you now. Uh, this is perspective projection and this is orthographic now like what the hell is this what the hell is going on oh my god oh my god this is a better example so when you're using a 3d application or a game or whatever you expect this right this perspective projection because everything further away looks smaller basically and it kind of kind of disfigures stuff to look 3d right and that's what orthographic projection does or no uh, perspective projection sorry that's what it does orthographic is still 3d but it keeps all the uh, values the same it does not distort anything to look more 3d so this might be good in something like a 3d modeling program while in a game this might not be that good in some games you will see orthographic projection uh, but mostly perspective now the difference is that every uh, position that you're gonna have in 3d is gonna have an X Y Z and a fourth value as well which is the W value now the W controls this uh, in orthographic projection the W stays one all the time and in perspective it changes so you divide it the values every value with a W value and everything further away becomes smaller now that might seem confusing but please just check out the uh, the tutorial on oh, learnopengl.com they'll explain it better than I can I'm not that good at it but here's another good picture of what happens now in orthographic projection or both of these projections you have a little object here kind of a square type thing right now this is called a frustrum all right and this is just a big ass oops excuse my language right <laughs> this is a big um, it's a big box and now the thing is that you have a near clip plane it's called a far clip plane this is basically your draw distance so everything in the far clip plane and near clip plane everything between that will kind of be flattened to piece of paper and kind of printed to your screen and everything in between here so everything outside of these walls right the side clip planes here is going to be cut out so they're going to be clipped that's what clipped is now when once you um, multiply a position or whatever with the uh, the model matrix you're in world space once you um, multiply it with the view matrix it's in camera space or view space and once you multiply it with the projection matrix you're in clip space because then you're clipping out vertices anything outside of these vertices will not be drawn and the graphic card knows that all right they will not be drawn now this is really good for 3d like I said as you can see things further away look smaller and here everything looks the same so that's what we're going to do. We're going to create a projection matrix and a view matrix. Now, hopefully I can do this correctly. Before I start that, I want to show you a little error that I'll get. Um, I'll first, Firstly, I'll show you the error after I'm done with the view and projection matrices. Then I'll correct that error. So this, is, this might be something that you guys will uh, come across. And so I want you guys to know how to do that. Now, to start off, what I want to do is I want to add some uniforms. Uniform mat4 view matrix and we're gonna send a uniform mat for uh, projection matrix because we are projecting every position whoops I need to change my keyboard there we go uh, so we're gonna be projecting everything onto a flat piece of paper type thing and showing it to the user and the FOV I, I forgot to show you the FOV the angle between the near clip plane here and the side clip plane here that's the FOV so the more you increase that, the wider the far clip plane will be, and the more of stuff, more stuff you'll have in the same area. So it will kind of paste onto here, and you'll have a bigger, larger FOV. So that is what FOV is in games. Another important thing to know is the camera is only, it's not what you think it is. It's only a coordinate system. It's an X, Y, and Z at an origin. So wherever the camera's origin is, the whole world is going to rotate around the camera. All right? And it depends on the rotation of the camera and everything. So when, next time you're playing a game, think about it. Uh, everything is moving around your camera. Not, You're not moving a camera itself. So that's the way that works. Uh, and we'll show you how to do that. Uh, let me just complete that. So we have them in the shader now. 
Well, let me just complete that. Let me say projection matrix multiplied by view matrix multiplied by model matrix. That will give you the MVP matrix, MVP from the right to the left. All right, and we're multiplying all of those together with the vertex position. Now, why are we not doing it up here? Because this vertex position, position we want to keep in world space. We don't want to put it in clip and view space because we're going to use it for other calculations. So sometimes it's good to keep it in world space only. So it's not affected by your camera movement. All right, it's really important to remember that. And especially not in clip space. You don't want to do that. So keep it in world space. We're going to use this for lighting calculations later on. Just multiply the GL final position here. Now I'm going to remove the shader stuff. We're going to get into matrices. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a, uh, whoops, this is the update here, here. This is where I want to do it. So GLM mat4 view matrix, and I'm going to the GLM, or I'm going to make it a 1.0, because remember, you might get an error from this sometime. If you don't see anything on your screen, sometimes it means that the GLM did not correctly initialize the uh, matrix to be a diagonal have ones in the, its diagonal if everything is zero you'll just end up with a bunch of zeros and you will lose all your data so just keep view matrices initialized to uh, what are they called identity matrix all right so just ones in the diagonal that's what you want to do so remember that is very important otherwise you'll just get a black screen so make sure that's correct uh, and then view matrix before we create it what we want to do is we want to create three vectors. Now I'm not going to talk about this too much because this is basically your camera. Now we're going to initialize a very basic camera which can't move and it's just initialized set to look in one direction, have a up vector and kind of have a position. So that's it because later on in a later video in the future we're going to read about cameras. Uh, not too far in the future but we're going to talk about them and create a camera class. But if you want to learn about it before, uh, you know, before that just go ahead and learn it on learnopengl.com. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a glm vec3 uh, world up vector. So we want to know the up vector of the world. glm vector, which way is up basically? Because remember, we're making a coordinate system for this camera. So we need an up vector, a front vector, and a right vector. But there, that's all created within the view here. So it does it for us. But what we need to give it is an up vector for the world and a front vector. So this is going to be 0.f, 1.f, 0.f. So y, a positive y, all the way up. That's the up vector. Now glm vec3, 3, three uh, front, cam front, glm vec3. So what is front? It is minus 1f. So it's looking just straight ahead in the z-coordinate. And then we want a glm vec3 cam position position thanks 3 um, wonder if I can do this if I've been doing this all wrong all the time yes I have because I'm, I'm dumb you don't have to do that I think nope you don't have to you can just do this Hey, I've been so dumb all this time, but okay, whatever. There we go. Uh, now we have a camera position, world up, and cam front. So we'll do this. GLM. Look at. It's called look at. So that's the uh, function to get the matrix. Now we need to specify the position. Cam position. We need to say the cam position plus cam front for the front vector because we don't want the front vector to kind of. If you change the position, we don't want the cam front to still be just minus one. We want to actually move it ahead with the position and then say this is front. So it's kind of looking in the same direction all the time. Otherwise, it will orbit around as you move the camera because the front vector will not move. Just think about that. Front vector still stays the same, but your camera origin moves forward. That means that it will kind of look the other way and stuff. So just go ahead and read about that if you don't really understand it. Don't worry too much about it just yet. Uh, then we want to do world up. There we go. We have a view matrix. Now we need to create the projection matrix. All right. To do that, we need to do the same thing. GLM vec3. We need to create a vec3 for the. Actually, we just need a float. 
float fov equals 90.f float near plane equals 0.1f now it's 0.1 and not 0 because we want stuff to clip slightly behind our camera so we don't see things clipping in front of us and stuff I mean so they don't just disappear so we want it slightly behind our eyes kind of uh, float far plane which is basically your draw distance I usually keep it at a thousand but if you have a slower computer put it down to a hundred or something like that you should be fine and then you want to make a GLM mat for uh, pers projection matrix projection matrix and just say 1.f so initialize it as well don't forget to do that so you don't get a black screen projection matrix equals glm perspective because we want a perspective matrix and here uh, we need to specify a few things now this is a very important thing we need to do here which you might not have thought of because we're going to start with glm uh, radians we need to give it in radians so our FOV currently is in degrees, 90 degrees, which we want to convert to radians here. Now we want to actually just go ahead and get a field of view and a uh, aspect ratio. Now one thing you need to remember is that our screen can change size. We have a resizable window and we're going to depend on our frame buffer width. All right, we're going to depend on that. So I'm just going to get it here initially. Uh, just like this, I'm just going to get the frame buffer width because we're going to set these two variables then depending on the window size because it will not be resized again guaranteed until we get to the while loop because then it'll start down here. It'll start being, uh, we might get a resize. So, but still, we did that. So it's initialized for us now in the beginning. So all we have to do is a static cast to float on frame buffer width and divide that with frame buffer height to get the aspect ratio now I'm just gonna do this so you guys can see a little easier what the hell is going on then you want to give us give it the near plane distance and the far plane distance so there you go that is your perspective uh, perspective what do you call it matrix and that's good so everything is done now one more thing that we have to do is because we put them in the shader here we have to send them to the shader uh, and all you have to do then is you copy this thing here and you paste it two more times um, and we are actually still initializing I just want to make sure that here we go so we divide everything up in it matrices here we go and then init uniforms so we're gonna send it to our view matrix which we created here in the shader right here view matrix all right and we want to call it matrix as well and just send your view matrix in there and here you send your projection matrix projection matrix now be sure to check all the spellings here because these spellings will not be corrected by C++ obviously because they're just strings but just copy paste them from here so that's what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna copy paste them in just in case just like that so we're safe uh, now we send them in for the first time and remember the projection matrix needs to be sent in several times because we'll have to recalculate the frame buffer width and height and the aspect ratio every frame because we might get a resize now you could do a thing where okay if you resize the window then you'll update the perspective or projection matrix which is probably smarter but I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna go the easy route and do this so what you want to do here we send our textures we send our matrix all that stuff here all good uh, I'm just gonna go down here and I'm gonna send the projection matrix again but before I do that I'm gonna do this GLFW uh, get frame buffer size from window and we're gonna pass by reference our frame buffer width and frame buffer height just because we might get a little resize and we want a new frame buffer height and width every frame so we make sure they're correct then you want to copy paste this whole projection matrix thing here and you want to put it down here 
all right right there and you want to you might want to do this project shun matrix equals glm mat 4 1.f so you just want to reset it maybe every time and then set it again so that is going to help you with the resize now let me run this and see hopefully we're okay if not then we'll have to make some changes okay it is not okay right now so we're gonna have to see what the problem is uh, frame buffer width frame buffer height far plane what if i just remove this for now and then we'll see what happens uh, it might be that i'm not sending it projection matrix uh, glm value projection matrix all right but that's good Am I actually mat4, mat4, view matrix, all right, that's cool. And perspective, frame buffer width, frame buffer height, near plane, far plane. All right, we're good. Cam front, cam position is 0, 0. Oh, that might be it. Uh, 0 0.f, 0 0.f, uh, 2.f. Let me just put it back a little bit. That might be the problem. Hopefully this is going to work because I really want this to work. Please work. Yes, there's our cat right there. So I'm going to put it 1.f because then I want to just keep it kind of close. There we go. So now I'm going to show you the perspective projection. So what that means. So we're going to rotate our cat in the y-axis in our update uniforms in the main loop. Not just set it once to 2 degrees, but update it 2 degrees per frame. That means we're going to rotate it. As you can see, it looks a lot more 3D. And hopefully, as I resize this, our cat is still going to stay the same size. And we're good. Now, let me show you what happens if you don't update your projection matrix each frame. All right? Let me show you what happens. The problem is that everything might stretch then. As you'll see, it stretches. And you don't want that to happen. You want to keep everything the same aspect ratio no matter what happens so this makes sure that we get a new frame buffer width and height and we set a new perspective matrix here okay so that's about it uh, there's some things some pitfalls here that I talked about uh, one of them being this whole initializing them and then obviously now as we saw setting the camera position correctly back a little bit uh, in order for that to work so but that all of that stuff works and uh, it's not too hard to understand but I understand if all of this is going a little too fast for you guys and girls uh, but just make sure you try to follow along read the book and read the ebook try to get your head around the state machine that is OpenGL and all of these uniforms how you send stuff to the shaders and why you do it uh, and why you probably don't want to do it all the time because it's really resource intensive and how matrices work because every vertex in our object is going to be run in the vertex core program right it's going to be running all the small threads in the graphics card and we're going to get uh, every point is going to be affected by the same matrices and that's going to move them all in the same way kind of that's why we can rotate and move stuff around uh, so yeah just just try to get your head around that uh, but yeah that's about it for this video next video we might talk about uh, how to move the cat around a little bit with our keys and stuff like that and how we can make some fun functions and then after that we'll try to make a camera class and so on and so on but for now thank you for watching i hope you learned something i hope this wasn't too difficult to understand with all the matrices and stuff um, and the full code will be on github so go ahead and check that out but thanks for watching again take care keep learning and i'll see you in the next one right bye bye